Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I am a nursing student. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, then you know that this is a different background. I'm in my living room because I wanted to film next to my Christmas tree. So this is my favorite ornament. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a little replica of my dog. I don't know if it's going to focus in the camera, but it's a little Shih Tzu. I have a little Shih Tzu named Merlot. This is my dog Merlot, she can't focus on the camera. And this is the little ornament. This is my favorite ornament because it's of her. It's dedicated to her. It has been a little while since I last uploaded a video. I believe it's been like a month and a half to two months and that's just because I have been busy. I don't have a schedule of how often I upload to YouTube or how often I'm going to upload to YouTube. I just kind of do this in my free time when I have time and I just have not had time the last couple of months and I'm about to get into why. My course load this last term was just very heavy and very stressful and then on top of that it of course as you can see it's Christmas time as I'm filming this video Christmas is only two or three days away so I don't know how quickly I'm gonna be able to edit this and upload it but as I'm filming this video Christmas is just a couple days away and then on top of everything going on I did quit my job a couple of months ago and I started a new job last month so I've been getting acclimated to that if you've seen my previous videos then you might know that I do go to nursing school full-time and I do work full-time and that has not changed so I didn't quit my job so that I could take on a different job with a different schedule I quit a full-time job like Monday through Friday standard hours during the day and I did start a new job last month that is also Monday through Friday standard hours during the day so I am still working full-time and going to school full-time just in case that helps anybody out there that wants to do the same thing or is doing the same thing just so you know it's still what I'm doing and it's still manageable for me at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and get into today's video about how my last session went I am a student at Chamberlain University and I attend the Tyson's Corner campus in Northern Virginia so I don't do traditional semesters and you can click on my previous videos to see the layout of the program but this last session I was taking two classes over the course of eight weeks so this last session I was taking anatomy and physiology 4 and a history class if you attend Chamberlain I was taking history 410 so just an overall summary of how I did this last session because grades were just finalized and posted to the gradebook a couple of days ago I got a C plus in anatomy and physiology 4 which I worked my butt off for and I got an A in my history class. So I'm not sure what my GPA for this last session is, but online I can see my overall GPA throughout the program. And if you watched my last update video, I did make the Dean's List, and I'm happy to say that I stayed on my Dean's List status. You need a 3.5 or above to make the Dean's List at Chamberlain and to stay on the Dean's List. And my GPA did go down because of anatomy and physiology 4, getting the C plus, but I am currently at a 3.65. So I'm still on the Dean's List, which I'm really happy about. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead and get history out of the way because that is not a nursing or science class, but if you need to take gen eds and you want to take your gen eds at Chamberlain, it might be helpful for you if I run through it really quickly and then I'm going to spend most of my time talking about anatomy and physiology. So for the history class, the layout of the class was online. I did not have to go to campus to take it, and I did not have a set time each week that I had to sit for a lecture. It was just a, well, it wasn't a go at your own pace class because I did have deadlines each week, but there was no lecture that I had to sit down and, and watch. So in that sense, I really loved the layout of the class. So overall history was not too labor intensive. I had one discussion board post that I had to do each week. So every Wednesday of the class I had a writing prompt and I had to do like a quick one to three paragraphs on that writing prompt. I had to use like a scholarly peer reviewed source and then I had until Sunday night to respond to at least one classmate. So pretty standard. I had my discussion board post that I had to do once a week and then in addition to that I had an assignment due every Sunday and that was it. The assignments that were due every Sunday were mostly case studies. They weren't too crazy. The biggest assignment that we had was our final project which I don't like to get too specific about 
the contents of each assignment because I don't want to get into any gray area of cheating, but the final project was a presentation that I had to do. So we were not meeting in person. So what I had to do was create a presentation and record my voice over and submit that. So I did like history class. It was very interesting. Some assignments were more interesting than others, but overall I didn't love the class because I felt like honestly any time that I spent working on papers, even as interesting as they were, was taking me away from anatomy and physiology, which I feel like was my main focus this session. You know, this is a nursing program, so any class that is not either nursing related directly or indirectly, whether it's like anatomy and physiology or microbiology, I consider those indirectly related to nursing because even though they're not clinical, you do need them. So like a history class, an English class, honestly, I see those as a waste of time for me just because I already have a whole other degree. I have two other degrees. So it was just a gen ed. It was a way to boost my GPA and it wasn't too labor intensive. And like I said, I got an A in it, which I'm very happy about. So now for Anatomy and Physiology 4. And if you do not go to Chamberlain University and you have not seen my previous videos on the layout of the program, don't be confused by me saying Anatomy and Physiology 4 or think, what the heck? Chamberlain does not stop at Anatomy and Physiology 2 like most other schools. Chamberlain goes up to Anatomy and Physiology 4. And it is not some like mega crazy, super difficult class on steroids. It's still anatomy and physiology one and two, but it's broken up into four classes instead of two classes. And that's just because Chamberlain moves at an accelerated pace, but there are certain classes like anatomy and physiology where they really cannot speed up. So in two months I had five exams in both lab and lecture. I had three main exams in lecture. So it, again, if you've seen my previous videos, I talked about the structure of how anatomy is at Chamberlain, but you will have class week one, week two, and then week three, you will be tested on everything you learned in week one and two. And then at the end of your exam in week three, so like half of the class is taken up by the exam, the other half of the class, you are learning new material. So you learn new material week three, week four, week five, you're getting tested on everything that you learned in weeks three and four, and so on and so on. So we had three exams like that. I believe those are called summative exams, where you're not tested on everything in the course, but you're only tested on everything that you've learned since the previous exam. So like I said, we had three of those exams. And then at the end of the class, we had a final in lab, which was our practicum. So if you are not familiar with how practicums work or you are not a nursing or med student, a practicum is an exam where you are seeing a series of pictures. Or for some people, you, you go to different lab stations and you see diagrams that are labeled and you don't get any context, you just have a picture or a diagram and an arrow pointing to a structure within that picture or that diagram and you have to say what it is. It's not multiple choice, you're just shown a picture, it could be a picture of anything that you've learned from day one of the class and you have to identify what that structure is. Some professors are really strict on spelling, so if you could spell it wrong but they can still tell what it is, you get partial credit. Thank God my professor was very lenient on spelling, so I actually did fairly well on my practicum. And then in addition to the three main exams and the practicum, the fifth exam was an ATI comprehensive exam. So Chamberlain did not create this exam or issue this exam. A third party company or whatever did. If you are a nursing student, I'm sure you're familiar with ATI. So ATI administered the exam and it was comprehensive. So anything that we learned from the first day of anatomy and physiology one, so not just anything we learned in that class, but anything that we learned from anatomy and physiology one up until anatomy and physiology four could be on the exam. So there was really no way to study it. I mean, you could kind of brush up on your notes from previous classes, but it was kind of one of those things where you either knew it or you didn't. It was very much like a standardized test. It wasn't just my class that took it and it wasn't just Chamberlain that took it. Nursing students all over the country take the ATI exam and then that company or ATI kind of figures out the average of how students did. So it's really kind of an assessment to see 
how the class of, I'm eventually going to be the class of 2024, but like an assessment to see how well this class is projected to do on the NCLEX. So it's really for the ATI to gather data, but it is graded. So that was the fifth exam that I took in anatomy and physiology. So anatomy and physiology is split up into two parts, the classes. There is anatomy and then there's physiology, which is lab. So the anatomy is the lecture where you learn how things function. And then the physiology is just where you learn about different structures, where they are in the body and where they are in relation to each other. So first I'm going to talk about lecture. So for the course load in anatomy and physiology four at Chamberlain, I had three discussion board posts, not per week, but just total in the class. So we had two discussion board posts at the beginning of the class, I believe week one. And then at the end of class in week eight, we had a final discussion board post. So that wasn't too bad. In addition to that, we did have one case study a week. I believe we had seven case studies total. So the last week of class, all we had to do was a discussion board and really just prep for our exam. But weeks one through seven, we had a case study to do. We also had EDAP assignments to do every week. And I am going to make a totally separate video on what EDAPT is, but that is very time consuming and very labor intensive. And then my professor also created worksheets and little quizzes that we had to do each week that took up time, but it wasn't too bad. And I actually really liked them because we were mostly graded for participation. So if I did a quiz and I only got and 80% on that quiz, my professor would give me 100 because I went and completed it. And the goal was that it was material that was gonna help me prepare for the exam. And it really did. I really liked the quizzes. They were quick, they were simple, and they kind of helped me know what to study for the exams. And of course, they helped boost my grade. And then for lab, we had, of course, a lab each week, and we had a lab report to go with the lab. So. We may spend one to two hours doing a lab working with our hands, and then we would be expected to complete a bunch of questions on the lab that we just did. And so that's all that lab consisted of, and the practicum was actually given in lab. So again, I can't get into the specifics of what we did each week in lab because I don't want to be seen as cheating or giving away too much information, but I will say that about half of our labs were virtual in, um, I forget the name of it, but it's like a simulated lab that you do online. And then the other half of our labs were done in person where we were actually like in the lab working with our hands. And one really cool thing that we did do in lab, if you're into that, is that we dissected a real life pig kidney. So I thought that was really cool. It was when we were learning about the kidneys and they're very similar to human kidneys. So we got to dissect that in lab. So unlike my history class, I actually phys So Chamberlain students are still taking anatomy and physiology for two full semesters this way. But like I said, if you wanna know more about that, you can click on one of my previous videos. I will see if I can link it down below, just on the layout of Chamberlain. So now I'm gonna get into the actual course. So, and if you see my phone, I just have my notes up here, which is something that I started doing recently so I don't get sidetracked on videos. But anatomy and physiology for was extremely labor intensive, nine o'clock every week. And then on Thursday nights, I was at school from six o'clock to eight o'clock. So lecture was three hours, lab was two hours. So in total, I spent five hours actually physically on campus. And that's pretty much a summary of what I did this last session and the classes that I took. Hopefully that's helpful to you. I'm really excited because my winter break officially started a few days ago and so I'm just taking time to relax and rest. And then of course I you know, work a full time job. So I've been working my new job which I like so much better than my old job. And I actually have free time now with this new job. So I've just been spending time cooking, watching TV, spending time with my husband and my family. I'm gonna spend Christmas with my family and my husband. And I'm just kind of like mentally preparing for next term, which starts January 3rd, which I'm really excited about. Next session, I will be taking two classes. I was actually scheduled just to take one. And if you reach out to an advisor because you're interested in going to Chamberlain, they will kind of draft up a like schedule of courses that you're going to be taking throughout your time at Chamberlain. And they stretch it out so that you are there 
three years, regardless of how many credits that you transfer in with. I transferred in with a bunch of credits and I still do have to take some prerequisites, but the default is that they stretch it out for three years and you have to play around with your schedule if you want to finish faster, which of course I do. So I was scheduled to only take one course next session, but I spoke to my advisor, we looked at what was available, and now I have two classes that I'm taking. One class is NR360 for those of you that go to Chamberlain. For those of you that don't go to Chamberlain, that class is Info Systems and Healthcare. The other class is NR449. And again, for those of you that don't go to Chamberlain, that is an evidence-based practice class. So both of these classes that I'm gonna be taking are, they start in January, on January 3rd, and they end like February 20 something. So these classes are gonna last the whole month of January, the whole month of February, and they are both online classes. So I don't have to go to campus for class. And as far as I know, I don't have to sit and attend a lecture at any scheduled time. So these classes both seem really flexible. I've heard feedback from other students that neither of these classes are as heavy or as labor intensive as anatomy and physiology. So I'm expecting a relatively smooth session next year. And I really need it because I've just been feeling really burnt out, working full time, going to campus, doing all of my assignments, and I just need kind of a break. This isn't a break because I'm still taking classes, but they're not heavy science classes. Um, NR stands for nursing. So anything that has an NR at the beginning of it at Chamberlain is a nursing class, but these are not clinical classes. They are theory-based classes. Overall, I know that this isn't like a reflection video, but I just wanted to put it out there into the universe that I'm really excited for 2022, especially when it comes to nursing school, because I will finally be doing clinicals in this next year. I don't start clinicals until summer, I believe towards the end of summer of 2022, but I'm just really excited to be entering into this new year knowing that I'm going to be putting on scrubs and going into the hospital. I've already started buying things for clinicals one at a time just because if you wait all at once to buy everything for clinicals, it can be really expensive. You need to have a certain type of watch if you're gonna wear a watch. You need to, of course, have scrubs from Chamberlain. You need to have a certain type of shoes. You need a clinical bag. You need a stethoscope. So you do need a lot of things. So my one advice is to not wait until the last minute if you're gonna do clinicals to get everything at once, but to kind of, at least if you have time, like if you have like six months or a year before you know that you're gonna be doing clinicals, I would say start buying things one at a time. That's honestly what I've been doing. So hopefully soon I'll probably do a haul of all the things that I've started gathering for clinicals. I still need to get a lot of things, but I do have my scrubs, I do have my clinical bag that has been sitting in my closet. I haven't even opened it yet and I'm really excited for that. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video because it's probably getting too long, but thank you so much for watching. You guys have been writing really nice comments down, like in the comment section, people have reached out to me over emails, which has been really cool. And I have seen some people on campus when I'm not wearing makeup and my hair isn't done, which is embarrassing, <laughs> but it is really cool, like I said, to meet other people that are either doing nursing or they are nurses or they're interested in nursing and either help give them advice, help kind of like talk to them about what we're going through in nursing school or people that are already nurses have reached out to me which is really cool because I've been able to ask people questions as well. So please continue to do that and thank you so much for watching my videos and I want to wish everybody a happy holiday no matter what you celebrate and a happy new year and I hope everybody stays safe and stays healthy this season and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!